Hey, welcome to internal strength training. We're going to get into spine training today, specifically for the lumbar spine. If you have two tennis balls, preferably because they're softer, uh, we're going to put them together like a little tennis ball peanut. If you don't have them, you could simply use your thumbs or fingers instead. A yoga block could come in handy, not mandatory. Also, what's really great for lumbar spine training we're going to use today is the resistance and assistance of a little thinner type of strength band. Uh, also not mandatory though, that will help us set up our spine training today. Okay, what we're going to start with with our two tennis ball, we're going to place them together so it, it's in the shape of like a peanut, okay? We're going to do an activity here for the lumbar spine that they call iso ramping or isometric ramping, which will be just a form of a, an isometric to target maybe more the multifidi muscles, deep spinal, tissue of the vertebrae of the lumbar spine, okay? So again, we'll place the two tennis balls like a peanut just above, as I lift my shirt up here, just above my S1, which is your tailbone. Right above S1, getting into L5, which will be your fifth or your very lowest or very first at the very bottom vertebrae. Okay, we're gonna place the two tennis ball right there in our low back lay back down on the ground, adjust if needed, and then from here already with the tennis ball, we already are a little bit extended in our lumbar spine or vertebrae, okay? So where you feel the apex of the tennis ball against your skin, I want us to isometrically just push our low back area, again, that's touching the tennis ball, into the apex of the tennis ball. I, I wanna only use that tissue and try not to use any neighboring tissue, okay? Now, I want us to time this in that how long are you able to contract that tissue before you feel any compensation or before you feel maybe you start to get weaker Okay, now the intensity is only gonna be approximately low intensity, right? Like we're gonna call it 10 to 30% intensity. Similar intensity in that in which we do our controlled articular rotations. And are we able to maintain a pretty good long duration isometric here, pushing into the tennis balls, which is actually allowing our vertebrae, hopefully again, that S1, L5 area of our lumbar spine it's gonna allow us to get into more flexion. Flexion is the fun, fundamental motion of our spine. So when we flex our vertebrae, we're actually opening up the space of those two joints, uh, or rather those two bones relative to one another in uh, what we call a joint or space. Workspace is what we're trying to gain here. A little more workspace of the lumbar spine by again, allowing a little more flexion. Okay, we've been there for a good minute. I'm now gonna roll the tennis ball. You could either do that by lifting up, and using your hands. Roll the two tennis ball just a little bit higher. So now, hopefully now you're in maybe L4, lumbar vertebrae, right? So we're a little higher and we're gonna repeat the same thing with our isometric ramping. Can you just use now that new tissue, right? Because it's now neighboring tissue that we've now located with the tennis ball just a little bit higher than where we were. Try not to use any other tissue but what you're feeling touching the tennis ball, okay? All that tissue on the underside of the skin touching the tennis ball. Can you maintain a similar contraction of approximately 10 to 30% low duration? Again, if you wanted to time this and test because what you can notice by doing time sets or reps here within each spot that we're gonna cover today you may get weaker in certain areas by not holding the contraction for as long. So you can see here why I might recommend we do time sets in that maybe you're weaker or stronger in certain areas or pockets of tissue. Okay, keep contracting. I'm feeling pretty stable here, about the same as where I was back when I was L5 S1 area. And we'll wrap up L4 here. And then let's move up one more spot. So we're gonna move up now. 
maybe calling it L3. If you're going up a little too far, smaller is better here, rather than rolling the two tennis balls up too high. Okay, let's begin to isometrically ramp here. Okay, a little more work for me here, I gotta feel in order to really get those tissues to engage. There we go, now I'm feeling a nice contraction. All right, you can see how again, timing these because maybe hair, in that case, that finding for me is it took me quite a few seconds in order to really start to feel these tissue. Earlier, I was able to get those things contracting pretty quick. All right, so there's a finding. I might want to make note of that. Maybe a prerequisite here, starting off, if you can, 30 to 40 seconds in duration. Ultimately, maybe leading these up to about 60 seconds because the goal here is capacity, right? Work capacity. So can we keep these tissues contracting for a little longer duration? Keep contracting, keep pushing just where you're feeling the apex of the tennis balls. Feeling nice and toasty now in that area. And again, you're just flexing more in the vertebrae of hopefully around that L4, L3 area. Careful you're not using too much of your hip flexors, your glutes. Really just feel those erector area of your low spine, and low back. Right, we know that biofeedback is such a very rich training experience for people. All biofeedback means is we're just using, in this case, the two tennis balls to push against. Okay, good, relax. We can move the two tennis balls up one more spot. Um, also, biofeedback, when I'm training people, I'll often use my fingers. I'll just get my fingers right there alongside, because where we are is we're right, if you could think like the tennis ball peanut, right? Your spine is going right down the middle. So we're really trying to get the tissue on the lateral sides of the spine to contract. Okay, let's begin here. Iso ramping. Oh, there we go. Nice. You might feel like you're using your abdomen a little bit, as you would, to push into the tennis ball to create, again, a little more of a fulcrum here, right? To get a little bit more, maybe, flexion or extension, depending on how we want to use these tennis balls. Okay, but we're going to put the bias or the focus here into lumbar flexion. See if we can keep pushing into those two tennis balls for roughly 30 more seconds. If you're timing, great. If not, next time you can time. Or maybe you're just making mental notes here and that you feel certain areas are a little maybe stronger or weaker in comparison. 10 seconds. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to do, you guessed it, one more spot. We're going to roll up, All right? Because maybe now we're getting into that L1 area. We start to then blend into the thoracic spine. Okay, last one. Let's begin. Isometrically ramp. Pushing into those two tennis balls. Hopefully, and, and usually it does, when we go and we actually articulate and move our spine after. You might have better sensory, better feedback, better control when you are trying to segment each of these vertebrae. I feel very strong here. Probably got stronger the more I did this and in that L5, L4, maybe even a little bit of L3 area, I had a finding there. Need a little more work there in comparison to maybe these L2, L1. And then if we did, and you could, you could roll the ball up higher and get into your thoracic spine. They kind of call what your lumbar spine area blends into your thoracic spine. They call that the lumbar thoracal junction. So a lot of times people might need work there too, okay? But where our focus was again was lumbar spine. Getting some use out of a yoga block, not mandatory. However, if you do have one, we can just place the yoga block down. And I'll show you too, if you don't have the yoga block, I just kind of crisscross my arms this way. Uh, so either could work. And what I'm gonna do is place the top of my head right on the crown of my head on the yoga block or my arms, okay? So in a quadrupedal position, which just means I'm on my forearms here, I'm on my knees, I'm then going to flex as much as I can in my upper back, 
Okay, so again, get on the top of your head. Flex as much as you can of your upper thoracic spine and hold that consciously in place. And then we're going to articulate through our lumbar spine. So if you can try to move through flexions similarly to what we did with the two tennis ball, using your pelvis now as well as your lumbar spine. We'll move back and forth through flexion into extension. Be careful in extension here. You don't cheat and use your upper back. And at your pace, just move through segmentally that S1, L5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and deflection. And then working backwards if you can. Or forward if you're counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th lumbar vertebrae, S1, tail, bone, and pelvis. And repeat, flexion and extension, with the focus being in the lumbar vertebrae, which makes up five lumbar vertebrae. Some people apparently have six. And of course, your pelvis is going to move in unison with those lumbar vertebrae here, so it's a little bit more global than the isolation that we used of the two tennis balls in our ISO ramping. Although I'll, we're moving globally, try to articulate through one vertebrae at a time. Layering on a little more radiation. If you're familiar with Sherrington's law of irradiation, contracting more of the neighboring tissue or muscles, in this case, more of the whole entire body. While we try to articulate just through the lumbar vertebrae in your pelvis, how much irradiation? Try maybe a little more than our car's routine of 30%, 40 to 50. Great place to begin. Interestingly enough, now that I am irradiating a little more, I'm feeling more in my abdomen area when I flex. And feeling more in my low back area contracting when I extend. Let's go another rep each direction. Trying to hold those end ranges. Great work. And that would be a level two, because we're blocking the head, maybe consciously trying to block that thoracic spine from moving. Call that a level two version. Level two cars are just, again, when you use passive blocks, whereas our level one cars, we're not passively blocking, we're more consciously blocking. And then of course, we'll get into some level three cars where we just increase the intensity shortly. Okay, if we need to actually gain any workspace in our lumbar vertebrae, a great place to start for our setup, getting into pails and rails, would be yoga block underneath my butt. And then from there, if I just lay back on the ground, with my knees bent, I want to try to create as much flexion in my lumbar spine and posteriorly tilting my pelvis, if you can just see here, letting everything just kind of settle down, everything that's hanging off the edge of that yoga block, okay? If you have to make adjustment at any time, probably again the best place for the yoga block, if you feel two bony structures above your butt cheeks, those are your posterior superior iliac spine, so your PSIS for short. Anything else that's hanging off it, just try to get it to lower right down. We've got to watch the yoga blocks not tilting up. I noticed that was happening with me at first. I just like to grab my rib cage with my hands and kind of press down here. Now we're going to reinforce deep breathing. Perhaps in through the nose. 
and out through the mouth. And the longer we hold this stretch, just try to feel like you're gaining more flexion in your lower back. Again, dropping everything down the edge of the yoga block. Okay, as we hold this for another moment, two minute passive stretch would be recommended. I'm gonna coach us up through what our pails and rails will be here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drive our tailbone and our pelvis down into the yoga block, okay? Then when I have a switch to rails, we're gonna try to actually tilt that pelvis more into a posterior tilt, try to gain more flexion of our lumbar spine, okay? Let's go through a practice rep. Deep breath in, irradiate, begin to push that tailbone right down into the yoga block at 30 to 40%. Six, five, if you're shaking a little bit, that's great. Two, one. Now be really light on the yoga block with your tailbone. Try not to push your feet down into the ground though, right? Just try to gain more lumbar flexion. Light on the tailbone. So if you're being lifted up here and relax, that'll be our practice rep. Okay, as you know, we need to increase the intensity here, especially if we're trying to create more workspace or open up more in these vertebrae so that we can move better in return. Okay, deep breath in. Radiate, let's drive that tailbone or sacrum down into the block 50 to 60 percent. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, rails and try to lift that tailbone, try to flex more in your lumbar spine. Three, two, one, relax. Okay, now, yeah, I felt a lot of abdomen there, right? I was really shaking. We're gonna go for another rep. We're gonna aim for about 80% here. Ready? Deep breath in. Radiate. Down into the block. Pale. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Now rails. The other way up. Six, five, 80%. Three, two, one. Relax. Good. If you're new at this, that could have been a great stimulating rep for you. If and again you don't have pain, if you're not new to this in your experience, we're gonna to wanna to increase the intensity. Ready, last rep, deep breath in. Radiate, greatest, safest effort, pails, go. Rails. Greatest effort, three, two, one, and relax. Good, okay. That's just one option of Pales Rails as to how you can execute that. Laying on your back with a yoga block, lots of other ways. If you want any other suggestions as to how to do that or you have any questions about how that worked for you, please contact me. Okay, not entirely mandatory, but if you do have a red strength band, you could get use out of that. Otherwise, we're gonna set this up the same way we had prior on our head or with yoga block, okay. If you got the resistance band, you'll get a lot of good biofeedback and a little extra resistance with that. How I'm going to set it up is around my hands like so. I'm going to place this on the very low back area. I like to put it a little bit more on my skin. Entirely up to you if you want to do that. Okay? I want it to be placed similar to where we were doing this earlier with our two tennis balls in that small lower area of your spine, S1, L5. Okay, now when I set this up into quadrupedal, my hands and my knees, typically when I do this activity without the band, are a little more under my, my knees under my hips and my hands under my shoulders. Here I'm a little bit more closed in, just because I don't want the band to roll up my back. Okay, so similar to how, again, we were doing this with the two tennis ball, I just want a micro movement back and forth, pushing only, I say micro because I only want to push where I feel the band. What's great about the band is not only resistance and flexion, but allow it to pull you down more into extension. Okay, let the band win, pull you down more. And then you have an added resistance here with the band in flexion. We can do these for a handful of reps. If we're trying to target slow twitch tissue, maybe we're looking at 90 seconds to two minute reps here and then yeah then you would switch up and move up to the next vertebrae okay if you've done an assessment with me you're very aware of where your sticky points are or maybe where your hinge points are in your spine 
Okay, sticky points and hinge points are two different things. Hinge points are where you move excessively. Sticky points are where you need more work because they're not moving so well, okay? So we can switch from there, move it up into the next neighboring vertebrae. So I'll assume now I'm a little bit more into L4, L3 area. And I know I was a little bit better the more I work up through my lumbar vertebrae. Definitely my kind of S1, L5, L4 area need work. So again, wherever you need the work is where you want, might want to put more specific inputs. In this case too, also maybe longer duration, just to build more capacity in those areas. Let the band win, pull you down into extension. Obviously use as much flexion as you can, pushing against the band and try not to compensate from any other neighboring parts of your body. Shoulders could compensate too much. Obviously the vertebrae above or below could compensate too much. Try to just feel where that band is. Ooh, that was a nice extension. I always wanna be patient in extension, let the band win. Be patient in your end range of flexion and really try to resist. Layer on more radiation if you need to, right? I often just don't suggest how much we are radiating first because I just let everybody kind of move through it at their pace, at their intensity. And then give your nervous system that afferent, feed, afferent efferent feedback, which is again, just a feedback loop to allow you to have more time under tension doing this activity to convince your brain that, yo, it's okay, I can move in and out of these ranges. And we'll wrap that up. Again, you can hit it for as long or as short as you want. The goal certainly might be to increase the intensity and decrease the duration of time when doing this activity. However, early in a process, especially if we're trying to gain more control after gaining more workspace via our pails rails, Let's start off with low intensity, longer duration, and more frequent uh, visits of doing that training. What I mean by more frequent is get into the habit of doing it more often, daily, multiple times a day if you can, especially if that's where you need to improve.